Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's show, the cold frames have a little bit of work to go before we can get the trees inside. Another stunning fall day in Minnesota. You really can't beat the fall colors with the bright sun. The leaves have been changing for weeks. Uh, a lot of peak up in northern Minnesota, central Minnesota. They're still, uh, we're approaching peak here in the metro area and, and points south. Uh, but the reds and the yellows, uh, oranges, everything's just absolutely stunning. A lot of fall work to do. Got the cold frames we're going to do some uh, sanitization of those in a little bit um, but i have gotten a head start on where all the trees will be outside in the garden before i cut the grass i had to do some raking waited for the leaves to be good and dry raked them all up and so i could get the leaves kind of in the bag and in a uniform way I'm going to have this nice protective barrier uh, between the wind from the west and uh, the trees that remain outside all winter. I've got my lilac tree already in here, a couple of my lilac trees. I've got uh, the tomato bush that's still back in there um, and the back bench. Some of those trees will move then off of the bench and we'll get them down into the ground. So the big key with uh, Minnesota winters, even if these are Minnesota hardy trees, we're always keeping in mind the size of the pot, uh, the hardiness of the plant, and we want to get it off the ground. So everything will come off the benches and go low to the ground and we'll heal them in a little bit with some mulch and or some leaves. I have plenty of leaves still that will be falling from some of the trees. And we'll make sure they're all nice and cozy. I will put a lot of uh, wood on the bottom, just some two by fours and two by sixes on blocks to get them off the actual ground just a little bit. So in the springtime, I can get them off just a little bit easier. They seem to come up a little bit uh, quicker. So a little tip if you want to move your uh, trees around earlier in the spring from the frozen ground, I do like putting them on little uh, blocks of wood. So this is just going to sit here for a little while because it's not going to be that cold quite yet. We've got temps into the mid 50s right through uh, Halloween, which will be very nice for the trick or treaters this year. Um, so this is going to stay for a while. The trees are going to stay on the bench for a while, but we have to get those cold frames. I want to make sure those are ready to go for when we need to bring them in. Because the last thing you want to do is to have all of a sudden this big old cold spell and you need to get all your trees in, you know, doing the bones eye shuffle in, out, in, out. We want to make sure that those cold frames are ready. So I have to sanitize them. I have to hook up some lights, check the heaters, plug in everything, make sure things are ready to go. So we have the cabin cold frame and we have the garage cold frame. Now in the cabin, we've got that one pretty set up but we're gonna bring the heater out here we're gonna first though sanitize so let's get some bleach and some warm water and let's do some cleaning I just brought out the windows and the door yesterday for the cabin cold frame so it is ready to go at a moment's notice the windows are in and the door off to the side there we only have a few plants still uh, sitting on the porch and um, we're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned on the inside but the doors and everything's ready to go so let's get that bucket of water inside the cabin and do some cleaning I've already swept out the cabin, so it's good to go to give it a good little wipe down. So I just got some uh, basic bleach and some warm water so my hands don't freeze. And we're just gonna go ahead and do a little uh, disinfecting. So we wanna make sure that the uh, cold frame walls are good and clean. We don't have any leftover, uh, possibly mold or mildew. Things on the wall that won't agree with our plants. So we're giving it a good clean. These walls were stained a little bit so they don't soak up a ton of water. It's good for watering the trees in the, uh, in the winter months here. Move my portable stand here and we'll get these walls good and clean. All right. 
right, I think that about does it. The good thing about cleaning this uh, cabin cold frame now when we still have highs in the 50s for the next week or so is that this is going to have a nice chance to dry out now and uh, it's clean and it's ready for trees at any moment. Um, but we'll get it dried out by leaving the door open and the air circulation. We've got the fan up above me over to the right. I've got the heat, uh, the uh, electrical source coming in and last year during the polar vortex, the two week spell we had with really cold weather, I had some intermittent electricity coming out here and one day. I lost power for a day, so we're going to double check our power today as well, uh, so we make sure that that's all in good shape. So new connectors, maybe a new, uh, I got a power cord that goes from one to three, so I can do the fan, I can do uh, the heater, and then any other source that I might need. So I think I'm going to replace this with a new one because something in the chain here is a weak link. So we're going to fix that here a little bit later, we'll check that, but now we have to go clean the the cold frame in the garage, so let's go do that. I have a couple pallets full of bonsai soil here. I've been starting to get some uh, bonsai by the bulk to uh, provide to uh, some other members and, and sell it to folks who need it. And I have a cold frame that I haven't opened up for a while, so we got some stuff to take out. We got some bins. We've got some buckets. Down below we have all our heaters. We do have one clip-on light still down here with a light bulb in there and I bought two more lights so I'm ready to uh, plug in some lights and uh, set this thing up so we have some light in here. This cold frame has never had light before and this year I'm going to experiment and put a little light in here. Um, I, I'm a little nervous because I fear the risk of having some light in here is in the springtime things are going to want to grow uh, faster um, and with it not being the sunlight and just being a couple of artificial full spectrum bulbs I'm afraid that we're gonna have longer leggier growth um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna test it um, all the trees in Minnesota as much as they go dormant they're outside with the Sun still uh, you know eight plus hours a day right I mean indirect Sun the Sun is low um, so some light might be better than no light so the jury's still out on that there's a lot of uh, back and forth discussions about that so we have one of my fun lights that I believe is not working anymore. We'll plug it in and see. I've got one of the fans up here in the corner up here. And I've got a fan down in the corner down there. And so that's going to keep the air circulating. And so we're going to find ways to plug all these in. But the first step is I want to give one quick little wash to the walls. Now I have a lot of the purpley pink stuff here, the insulation that's exposed in most of this cold frame. So that's brand new, never been used before. This wood is mostly new, but this is a nice shiny smooth surface. I'm going to go ahead and clean that out and get some um, bleach solvent on all of this uh, shelf system. So we're just going to be better safe than sorry. So a fresh bucket of water and we can do some more cleaning. Everything is out that needs to be out. So this time I got myself a bigger towel instead of that little scratchy pad because I'm going to be reaching here more and I don't want to give myself any slivers so I'm going to make sure I have a really good big surface of uh, cleaning here. Got some nails sticking out for future connection points and we're just going to give this a good clean. I think we're in good shape. This was uh, a repurposed cold frame. I recycled some of the wood, so we got some of that good and clean now. And we gave it a good wipe down. So this cold frame is ready for trees, but now we're gonna try to set up some light contraptions here and make sure the heat's working. So when we get the trees in here and we get those cold temperatures, it's gonna be able to turn on and keep this thing plenty warm. Right now with the insulation and the, it, and the fact that it's in the garage, probably would keep this thing pretty warm for uh, several weeks yet without even turning any heat on. But uh, we're gonna plug some things in and play a little bit, see what we got going on. I'm gonna hook up the two fans and two lights and see if I can get those going. So I, I'm pretty fond of just using the, uh, these kind of PAR cans, reflector cans. So I go ahead and get those super cheap at your big box store. And then I'm usually buying the grow light. So this is the uh, uh, Fight Electric grow light, um, full spectrum grow light. 
it's a flood flood bulb so when that's in there and the lights reflecting off we're going to get hopefully a little bit more spread so i'm going to hang these up in the corners we've got one back behind me over to the right we got one over here on the left we've got our power source now anytime i put lights on um, in my cold frames or the fans they're going to be on a timer so you have to make sure you buy timers so i do have myself some timers and we're going to set those up as well now because the cold frame is built into the wall now i uh put this thing into the wall i've got two outlets in the cold frame that we're going to cover with some tarp i think we're just going to go easy and cover with tarp so i don't get water on there but what i need to do is have a good outlet so a lot of times your um, timers, this is just the push pin style, have a great big chunky feel to it. If you put it on the wall, well, I've got all this stuff, pink purple stuff insulation that's real thick and so this won't even fit in there. So I have a real nice thick sturdy um, extension cord that allows the three prong and the three prong. So now I have power. And so that's gonna be good. I can put this anywhere I want to. I can hang this up with uh, some little hooks and be good to go. I'm going to turn it on for right now, so when I plug these power uh, cords in, I can have light. What's nice about um, this particular um, timer is it has the three prong in there as well and one on both sides, so it serves double duty. So in this case, I'm going to hook up this light, and there it goes. And I'm going to hook up this light, and there it goes. And so now I have some light that we can turn on and, tur and turn the angle. So we are good to uh, supply some light to our trees. We're gonna adjust these and put them in the wall so they're more permanent in a permanent spot. But right now, we can already see that we've got some light on there. Problem is we got some dangling cords here, but I can bring this cord here now through up this spot right here. And I can attach these cables up against the wall up here. Uh, a couple of nails up there to keep all the wiring from uh, the water source. So it'll be really nice. And this will be super nice and high. This will be able to, this will be able to come through right in there set right in there super nice so we've got those on and I can set this on a timer so we're gonna set this just as the uh, Sun is on on the outside we're gonna put the lights on on the inside here so if we have a sunrise of about 7 a.m. and uh, it gets dark by 5 o'clock 4 o'clock in the winter time you know we're gonna go ahead and set the times for that so they are ready to go on and off um, kind of like they'd be outside in nature so there are the lights. Now, we're gonna put them up secure in just a little bit. Now I've gotta see if the fans are working. So we're gonna plug that in. I've got one fan over here. I've got one fan over here. And I've got my other timer. So let's go ahead and rip that out of the box. And we'll uh, get those fans to spin it too. There are a lot of nice digital ones of these on the market that I've uh, used from time to time. They do a really good job. Um, I'm gonna plug this one actually in the wall over here because um, this one actually can doesn't have uh, the purple stuff in the way right now. So I'm gonna have to trim a little bit more purple stuff. I need an extension cord for this one to reach all the way over there. And then I'll get this over here, plug this guy in and we'll see if these fans turn on and give us some power in here. So we'll go ahead and put that on over here pronged into the wall out here and that outlet will have to do some uh, uh, pink stuff many uh, figuring out there to keep it uh, even more and the fans have turned on so if I uh, get a piece of paper up here see that'll show you the fan blowing a little bit there it's going a little bit there, the fans are working. How about down here? Yep, I can feel it. It's kind of cool air right now. So the fans are on and the lights are on. We have plenty of outlets. So the last thing we have to do is plug in the heat source. So let's get our heaters plugged in. So since I have a bigger cold frame this year, I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, kind of milk house style heater. And I'm gonna put that at the bottom. And that's going to be plugged into here. So this is my thermostat regulated heat source. So this will plug into the wall. And then we're going to set this uh, for about 40 degrees for right now. And when it gets below 40, it'll go off. So we'll 
plug this in, and then we'll plug this one into here. If I can, looks like I can't reach that one. So we'll temporarily take this one out for the moment, for the fans, and we'll put this one right here, just to make sure that my heater's gonna be working here. So we're gonna put it at the bottom, but we'll put it up here for right now, just to do a little test run here. Right now it is not on. Whoop. So let us go ahead and make it turn on when it's like 60 degrees or less and see what happens. We'll grab our thermostat regulator here. We'll just keep turning until we hear it go on. Whoop, I just heard a little click. And now this is turned on. So we can turn this on to low all the way up to high. Um, we can have it with or without the fan going. And this is way too hot, of course, for now, but we know that it works. So if I turn it to the left till it clicks off, right there, clicked off. So it went off at about 50 degrees. Uh, we we're supposed to have a high of about 50 degrees today, so it's pretty accurate. So that's pretty nice to know. So again, we'll turn it to the right. And there we have the fan and the heat running. We're starting to warm this up. Turn it back off. Okay, so our power sources are good. We need an extension cord for this guy, one that'll fit into the wall, because these cables can be kind of thick. So as you can see, the thermostat regulator plug is super big and chunky, and you can only go straight down with it, so nothing can be plugged in below it. And you plug in your heat source, and you're good to go. But this might need to have a small little adapter so we can make it stick out of the wall a little more, so we can plug in all the other things that we need to plug in. Everything is working. Now we just have to set it up into its final configuration and then um, make sure all the cables are out of the way and we'll see if it all works again. So let's, uh, let's do that. Okay. Stage one is done. So I have these electrical wire holders. You just wrap around your wire and got this securely up here. I can move this just enough to adjust it based on light. I got one up in the top center of both of the wires going to the lights. Attached down below goes to the plug-in source. The lights are at the angle they need to be at. We got some screws that are holding them in place and they uh, I can adjust them a little bit to uh, improve the light angle. Uh, the trees up here will get most of the light. Um, I don't have any light down below, but if I go ahead and move some of this, some light will lead down there. And that's more than I've ever had before. I might have a third light that's at this level right here for anything down below. I have some big space over here on the right. That'll probably be where that um, my uh, new spruce tree will go into there. Might have to take this shelf out and make that whole tall space for the spruce. And then probably those uh, two pots of the um, larch and spruce that I gathered that I don't want to keep frozen this year. I want to keep them here in the cold frame. So I can move this shelf off and have plenty of room for the tall stuff. So the lights are in place, the fans are still running, but now I'm gonna make sure that those cords are not just dangling around where they're gonna get all full of water. So let's see what's gonna happen with that. So again, we have a fan and we have a light and a light and all the cables up in the top and then coming down the center. And then there's our fan timer going to the fan up there, going to the fan down over there. Plug right there. I've got the extension cord looped up around behind the fan, some extra on the floor there. So I'll get a three footer instead of a six footer. And then there's the outlet for the big uh, heater. So the big trees will go here. So all the uh, stuff that I'm watering will be down below. So I won't get that all wet. I'll put a little bit of a, uh, tarp over that though to protect it and some tarp over there. Now we have the fans going. The heat is ready to go off when it gets to the low enough temperature and the lights are on right now. Of course, I'll turn the, those off for the first couple of weeks here so we won't, we won't have plants in here for a good couple of weeks. The garage cold frame is ready for plants. 
I'm back in the cabin cold frame and I changed up my power source. So I had a three-way on here before that just didn't seem to have a tight connection to my main source. And what's nice about this three-way is it has a light in here. So this light indicator tells me that I've got power, which is really super nice. And then I can turn in my, plug in my other items and make sure we are all set and good to go. So I have another thermostat regulated power source here. I get these at uh, Menards is where I purchase them. And so it's plugged into my heater. I got a little porcelain heater down here that turns off if it's tipped over and I got uh, different high levels on here. So we're gonna turn this up and see if it clicks on. Turned on about 50 degrees again. And I've got power here. It's all, all the way, it's on high. And it's blowing out heat. So I turn it back off. Just a little slight little click there. We'll do it again. Turn it back on at about 50 degrees. So we're gonna turn it back now to about uh, freezing, 30, 32 degrees. We're gonna put it on the wall for right now. And, and that's, that's ready to go. Some dangling cords here. So again, we're gonna have to finagle where these cords go. I've got some uh, uh, screws up in the wall from what we did last year. And we also have to plug in some power source for the pond so and the fan. So this plug is gonna be plugged in and this will be a live feed out to the pond where I'm gonna have um, another two or three way and I'm gonna have a de-icer out there in the pond for this year for the fish and also a bubbler to keep some oxygen down there a little bit uh, for the fish as it'll freeze uh, mostly about halfway down to the bottom of the um, pond. The bubbler will keep it from freezing solid uh, for sure. Um, so we have that for that. So that goes back out of the uh, cabin coal frame here, heads out towards the ponds. And then I have one more outlet and that's for this guy right here, the fan, which is sitting up top here. And this will go on a timer. So I need to find my other timers and I have to get an extension cord. And so let's just see if it's working right now. We'll just plug it in. It should be working right now. There's a timer right here. So let's go ahead and see if I can put that on here. I can't because it's too wide because of this. So I'll have to just test it. That's the problem with some of these um, three ways and these great big super nice uh, systems we have here uh, for timers, but sometimes they're super wide and chunky so we have to put them in another adapter. The fan kicked in. Yeah, it's working. So we're gonna get an extension cord that I can plug this into so we'll end up plugging this into this timer here, the timer into an extension cord, but I need an extension cord with a three prong, and then that'll go into this cord for the third source of power to make sure that I have a fan going off about every hour for about 10, 15 minutes uh, during the daylight hours, um, you know, a couple times an hour. And so there is the power sources. Now we just have to make sure that we can um, hang up all these wires and uh, make it really nice and ready for the trees. So there is the fan, and when that's powered up, it's going to just uh, rotate the air below some of the warm air from the top, circulate it around the cabin, and we're good to go. Now we have a close-up here of the power source. That's the regulated power source, so it's 32, it's going to click on. We've got that little indicator light now that's going to show that that one's going to be uh, good to go, hopefully all winter with no polar vortex issues. Can take care of all these cables, make it all nice and organized. Well, I think that should do it for the cold frames today. The cabin cold frame has been sweeped, it's been uh, disinfected, and uh, we got the power source connected. Uh, make sure that we got good power there so everything's ready to hook up there. And the garage cold frame looking pretty nice. I'm super excited about uh, seeing trees in there. A little extra room. I'm sure I'm, I'm going to fill it up quite easily. One thing I do have to get for the garage cold frame though is some boot trays. We don't want the water spilling all over the place. So I'm going to go out and get some uh, boot trays today or tomorrow or maybe just order them online and have them delivered. We'll see. It's a beautiful day. The sun is still out. Awesome, awesome, beautiful color right now. So my stepson and I are going to go for a walk and we're going to bring the camera maybe get some really good fall pictures that we can put in the next video. We'll see. So we're going to go take a walk. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, keep the comments coming. And uh, like if you can or subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we'll see you very, very soon. Take care of you. Take care of your bonsai. And we'll catch you on the next one.